Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we are going to build a very simple program which can detect if there is fire in a particular image. I mean, the forest fire in a particular image or not. Wildfire detection, you can call it. The data set is available in Kaggle and I will give you the link from where you can download the data set. It is available and it's a 26 MB file. So you can download it and the data set is very neat and clear. You can see that we have got the forest fire which is very clearly segregated into testing and training. So we got just two classes available here. You can see that all these details are very clearly mentioned here. Two labels only available here, one with fire and another one with no fire. So I will show you some of the images that we have. In the testing we have fire, you can see that. And in the no fire section we have got some images. Likewise, you can go ahead and see training and validation, fire and you can see that no fire as usual training and validation takes more images and testing keeps a little bit of images 30 percent normally will be kept for testing and 70 percent goes to training and validation can we implement it can we build a system which can detect it well you got some prerequisites to be met what are they very simple just follow these steps where you may have to activate tensorflow you may have to use the conda create with tensorflow and python equal to 3.5 pip install ignore installed upgrade tensorflow all these three steps may have to be done if you get any error messages which are connected to this try it out if it is not required that's well and good but most of the cases it will be required now let's go to the preliminary steps of importing and we need to go ahead and first install pip install tensorflow pip install opencv python pip install opencv contrib python these three are pretty much important and i am doing the installation part right away through this code you could as well avoid these three and you could have installed it separately as well through your conda prompt you can do that now i import tensorflow as tf numpy as np tensorflow is already available so from that i am going to import keras i have got os importer cv2 importer which is open cv from tensorflow i import the image data generator from tensorflow i import image and we are going to plot something so we need matplotlib as well now we have to run it i am going to run it you see that right now so it may take a little bit of time but since i have already run it so it will be a little faster first time when you do it it could take a little bit of time now what is the next step we need to really go ahead and classify some images as testing and some images as training i prefer 70 30 normally so 70 percent goes to the training and validation i have already shown you the path and the data and 30 percent goes to the testing so the split happens here so please understand this is very very important also we need to use the step with image data image data generator where the rescaling is specified this is a normal step that we do and we have to make sure that the image data set is split in such a way that sufficient amount of images are there for training and validation and sufficient amount of images are there for testing so once i do that you get this run and you could see that 1832 images belong to two classes fire and no fire similarly 68 belong to two classes you can move some images from training and validation to testing and here and there you can move it to see on the trial and error basis if you get better results now what do i do very simple we are going ahead with building the cnn model simple cnn model with sequential network so model equal to keras.sequential we are following sequential and how do we get a cnn model built very simple convolution layer followed by max pooling or any other pooling techniques which include uh, average pooling or some pooling then again convolution max pooling convolution max pooling number of layers number of convolution operations depends on the trial and error method we can do more we can do lesser see which which method gives you better results which approach gives you better results and you can do that also we are choosing relu here you can choose other activation functions which are available as well sigma it can be another option try it out all these are trial and error right i strongly tell you try it out and you may get better results even so we have got these many layers of convolution followed by max pooling and then i go with flatten and final step is here where we get the dense coming into picture you can see that and activation function is relu followed by sigma that's all now what do we do we have built a model the model has to be checked if there is any error error coming no errors and then now it is time for us to compile we need to compile it right so optimizer is adam and loss is binary cross entropy matrix is accuracy so once we do that we have compiled it already that's all so we are all set to go and now we are going to go with the fitting we need to specify the epochs here the epochs can be 5 10 15 anything so see the accuracy i got 91 percent accuracy with five epochs if i make it six it could be a little more better accuracy so it is all up to you for example i am keeping it seven here for an instance it will take a little more time but it depends on how many times the iteration happens it is more of iteration that is going to happen from the first image to last image and that's how the epochs work 
So it's up to you. You keep it the way you want, but you can do a trial and error here and get the best number of epochs suited, identified through trial and error method. That's how I have done. Five was okay. 90% accuracy is what I get. And I believe that it is sufficient. Now, when you complete the uh, part of it, we need to go ahead and move with the predictions. So I've got the predictions here. You can see that. Let the epochs run. No problem. You can see that the predictions are happening here. Predictions equal to model dot predict with test data set and predictions equal to NP dot round predictions. So after that, I'm printing the predictions. What is it? Is it fire or no fire? One zero, they represent fire and no fire appropriately. And now we are printing the length of it. We have got how many images in the testing data set, whatever we had in hand. You can see that here 68 images are there. So all the 68 images are now predicted with fire or no fire result. Now we are going to plot. So we are going to plot the loss followed by that I have plotted accuracy. This is not required uh, essentially. You can do it or you may skip it. But the next step is most important. We are going to get the image out of the data set and we are going to see if it is fire or no fire and we are going to print it. So what do we do here? I am taking predict image. So predict image is the one that I am taking. You can see that the function is defined very clearly here. With this predict image, what do we do is we pull the image out of the data set and we check if it is having fire or not. You can see that I have taken an image by name abc1172.jpg, fire is there. abc178.jpg, fire. abc347, no fire. abc367, no fire. So it is detected now. So this is a method that we have written here where we are pulling the content, pulling the image out of the data set and we check and appropriately the labels are added as well as fire or no fire. I'll give you this a notebook as well in the link so that you can try it out. This is a very simple piece of code. Uh, it's a very simple CNN based code. You can try it out and in case you have questions, you can ask me, I'll be able to help you. Try it out and by now I believe that epochs are done. Uh, you can see that the accuracy has improved 92.65. Last time it was when it was just five, the accuracy was close to 91. Now it is 92.65. Even if you increase to 10, it would be a little more accuracy that you would get. So try it out. That's all. I hope it was useful. Come back to me if you have any questions. Thank you.